states made a final 15. So I, I ask this body, put this back into the plank, let the main body of this delegation vote this up or down, just like we did last night with Texas National Movement. Thank you. Hey, hey Bill. Um, just a, it's like a point of information, but um, we're being a little more, a little less formal than that. W those uh, quotes you were citing about, they, there's a resolution from the committee, or from each of the SDs. Is that things that were, are you saying that they were submitted to their SD? Those were the, the, the resolutions that you forwarded me and asked me to put into that master spreadsheet for state Texas. Okay, so that were thing, those were all things that were voted out of the SD. That's correct, that okay. is correct. All right, I just clarifying, thank you. Um, speaking against, are you uh, against? Uh, what I have is a motion to amend. Okay, um, that's in order, so yeah, we'll take okay, a motion to amend. Uh, I move to amend uh, this plank by striking all the first sentences and leaving only the, the last sentence. It, it leaves the le Texas legislature shall ex extend uh, the call for convention of states. Uh, and if I get a second, I will speak to my motion. Okay, thank you. Um, I was one of the, the people that voted to remove this plank yesterday. Uh, and I did so based primarily on the philosophy about from, from the platform committee that um, that if you've already done something in the legislature, why keep it in the platform? We were trying to streamline it, and I thought, okay, why don't we streamline it? Uh, and then I've learned that uh, we need to, uh, there is this sunset provision, and so now I, I've changed my mind on, uh, on the fact that since there is a sunset provision, I think it makes sense that, uh, from a platform perspective, if their body wants to do it, we should have that in the body. I, 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 the other thing that happened to me is yesterday, I voted in, to have a vote for Texas National, Texas Independence yesterday, uh, something which if it ever comes up, at least with current circumstances, I would vote against. And so I'm not sure whether I'll you know, support or not uh, in the future on this, but I do believe it should be, this should be in the platform because I think there's enough people in the Republican Party that support it. And so, but I think you just get short and sweet uh, with with the, what it is we want the Texas legislature to do, I think it'll make it go down a lot easier for me to be able to vote for it. That's why I'm making the, this motion. Thank you. Yeah, I'm good with that. Yeah! Is there anyone speaking? Is there anyone speaking against Point of uh, Mr. Glass's motion? Point Are of you wanting to leave limit the power of jurisdiction of the federal government, Tom? Yeah. I want to leave, the Texas legislature shall extend the call for a convention of states to limit the power and jurisdiction Perfect. of the federal government. Just kidding. Yeah. Okay. okay. Is there, are you speaking against? No, I'm, I'd like to call the question. Okay. We're, there's a call to the question. All in favor of the amendment as outlined where we delete everything in green and keep what is in yellow. If you're in favor of that, say aye. Aye. If you're opposed, say nay. Nay. The ayes have it. Mr. So. Chairman, Stephen Callis, SD8. Just for point of uh, clarification, SD8 was among those that called for the extension of Article 5, which is why I am supporting it as well. Okay, so thank you. It was just wanted noted in the record. Thank you, Mr. Eli. Yes. I'm going to speak Mr. against. Eli. This is Wait. the only thing that my SD, uh, out of the entire platform, this is the only thing my SD sent back with instructions for to continue to fight against. SD 13 vehemently opposed this. I am. Uh, I will also bring up another person that's in favor of this, and that's the Young Turks, um, which are not people I normally side with either. So um, I, w I, w I am concerned that if we now put this in here, not only is this something that this body could goes back and forth on constantly, but it would could be considered as a priority. We have a lot of things to consider. There's a lot of problems with this na nation to consider something a priority that's honestly already in the platform, it's already law, and now we're gonna make it a priority issue out of all the things that we need to work on and do as a body, that greatly bothers me. I will continue to vote no, and I, I urge others to do the same. Thank you, Mr. Vaughn. Is there anyone who wishes to speak for, in favor of uh, reinstating the plank as outlined? I call a question, Mr. No, Chairman. I'd like to speak against him. 
Um, question has been called. So, Mr. Chairman, I would like to speak for it. The question has been called. Oh, I'm sorry. So, what does that mean? The question was called. It's not a debatable thing. Under Robert, once the question is called, you have to have the vote. Once the question is called, you have to have the vote. All in favor? Oh, that's right. There is. Yeah. Is there a second for calling the question? Second. Okay. Tony Robertson, SD. Mr. Chairman, point of information. Who is asking? Senate District 17. 17. Caleb. Oh, 17. Sorry. Sorry, Caleb. So, can you repeat again, just to make it clear, so that everybody knows what we're voting on? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, a motion to call a question. You have to vote, you can't continue to take testimony. So we are now voting on whether or not we should call the question. So we're voting whether or not we should call the question. Okay, so all in favor of calling the question say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. 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 Okay, so we're not calling the question. So we're back to testimony. We've had one for and one against. Um, I think John was going to speak. Are you speaking for or against? I'm speaking for it, sir. Okay. And so you're speaking for and you want to speak against. So after John, uh, Carter will have yours. yours. Okay. Uh, the, the, it has been said, but the, some of our public testimony here that it's not constitutional. Uh, it is the Constitution. It is Article 5, which complies with, of course, Article 6, which is the definition of the supreme law of the land. It's not some surreptitious effort by radical Texans in Rockwall or someplace else to rush out there and take over the Constitution. The very, very first Constitutional Convention was used to create our existing Constitution. That was a one-off event. It would never be re repeated like that. This is not the purpose. The Constitution that was created by that Constitution has Article 5 in it. It's an original article. It was not an amendment to the Constitution. It's original. And what that does, it recognizes the problem with growing government because they, you have to go back and understand that when our country was first founded, it was founded as a confederacy called the United States of America. And when it didn't work, they tried to fix it. And the wise, uh, not so religious, uh, founding father uh, said to me, who came out quoting scripture, Benjamin Franklin, uh, it pointed out to them that they had uh, failed to do what they had been doing during the actual Revolutionary War, where they met in that same room every day to pray. And so they went into a prayer revival where they were trying to fix the old Confederacy. It totally changed, and what came out of that prayer revival is our present day Constitution. Okay, and in there it still said we're called the United States of America. The difference is now we were a federation with enumerated powers, Article 2, Section 8. Okay, very limited, very specific powers. Later on, when the, Const when the Constitution was amended with the Bill of Rights, the same Bill of Rights that gives us the First Amendment also gave us the Tenth Amendment, which would very clearly, very succinctly said that any power not authorized for the uh, federal government and not prohibited to the state governments are all reserved to the states and the people. And so this is, uh, this is where we're at here. Now what's happened is, we, as we all know, there is what we call the swamp. Well, I've done business there. Believe you me, it is a swamp. I hated doing business there so much I pushed it out of my my, 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 my marketing area. If I, if I were to draw an arch and title that arch, and an arch is a very strong thing holding up structures. It holds up bridges and so forth. The Romans did that well. But if I drew an arch and I were to put the label on it, I would say this is government corruption. This is big government corruption. At the top of that arch, I would find a keystone, and I would label that keystone the 17th Amendment. So one of my uh, purposes for wanting a constitutional convention is the possibility of repealing the 17th Amendment so that John Cornyn would be accountable to our states. Thank you, John, for your testimony. This is why I support the, con the, the, the Convention of States. Okay, thank you, John. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mr. Thomas, you yes. are recognized. And thank you. Here we go again. Uh, what, what we have 
uh, in Article 5 is, in fact, a, a uh, clearly it's constitutional, but there's two, there's two ways to amend the Constitution within Article 5. One is a legislative process. That's really the first sentence. But if you look, it's a run-on sentence. And the Congress, whenever two-thirds and so on, the Congress is the subject. At the end of that first clause, they allow the states to, uh, to, to apply, if you will, to the, to the who? To the Congress uh, uh, for the, the ability to have it. Now, I, I'm not a lawyer. I do know from, my, from our area, uh, like others, we, we are not big fans of this. It, it, it's, it's, uh, it, it's something that, that I think we can agree to disagree upon. But I will just say this. The, the, I can give you 17 examples of amending the Constitution with, with uh, the, the, the legislative version of Article 5, and it's been done successfully. We may, not, we may not like them, but it was done successfully, and it was limited. There's th this, contrary to popular belief, the Convention of States has only been used one time in the history of this nation. And that was to go in to specifically fix the Articles of Confederation. And, excuse me, I, and when, when they got there, they changed. I agree with you. We got the Constitution we have today. I agree with you. It was providentially driven. But I do not agree with you that I would trust the people today to do what they did then. I think it's a crapshoot. Um, but this is something that, that good people can agree to disagree upon. And so I just, I, I will vote no on this, but I, I will not be angry with people who vote yes. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Is there anyone speaking in favor of, adopt, of reinstating this blank? Mr. Chairman? Hold on. Against. Should we let Mr. Ms. Guggenheim speak, have the last slot? On against? I'm against. No, she's, she's going to be for. Okay. Oh, you're against. I'm sorry. Are you for? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, you're recognized. Much like I said last night, my Senate district wants this. I don't agree with my Senate district. But the Senate District made their decision. They made it clear. The body is more than capable of making this decision. And we would be doing us all a disservice when we go to the full convention by not putting this in there. And with all due respect to the COS folks, they're very well organized. And the entirety.
or something that one of you want to address? As we're going past, just let me know and we'll, we'll pause and um, sort of review that. Okay, so starting with the preambles is fine, principles are fine. Um, when you get to constitutional issues, it's 105 on the line 105 of what I'm looking at. There's some edits in red that I think the editorial team just did to clean language up and make it um, sort of read a little better. I'm planning on rolling past that unless someone really has a problem with what the editorial team did because you know, when I was reading the document this morning, every time I saw them do something like that, I agreed that it did make the document read better. So if you all disagree, then let me know. Okay. Um, Constitution, so limiting, if you look at line 158, limiting overreach, limiting overreaching state government. Um, when I started reading this this morning, I, I want to make, I have one question and then I want to make a change. If you look at D where it says the Constitution must be changed to require the legislature, um, I think we should just let the editorial team add the state Constitution because since this is in the constitutional section, I tend to think in terms of federal constitution and this is clearly about state issues. So without objection, we'll have the editorial staff do that. Um, for the, do what? add uh, the state constitution in D. Um, it's an editorial amendment, so I don't think we need a second. Um, but on the plank, it's got a title and then it just has a series of things that I think don't hold together that well. So I'm asking the body if you think we need some kind of a lead-in statement on this plank. I mean, it just says limited limiting overseeing government, repeal and replace Texas 418, and then, so that's kind of a fragment, and then it's no form of government shall ever, you know, and it starts having a little more complete things, so it just, it seems a little awkward to me. I don't know what you guys want to do with that, or if you just want to leave it in. Chris. Yes, Mr. Chair, I'll have to think out loud if you'll permit me. Absolutely, yeah. I would suggest that we add as an opening remark, we recognize that the sovereignty of this state and of its citizenry I'll, I'll wait. Hold on a second. Thanks. You start over. Uh, no problem. <laughs> we recognize that the sovereignty of this state, we recognize that the sovereignty of this state and its citizenry has been imperiled and threatened by the ongoing overreach of state elected officials and agencies. Period. We therefore call for restoration of our liberty by the following. I like that, thank you. Thank you. Um, yep, Mr. Westbrook. 
<laughs> Mr. Chairman, do you require a second on this? Um, we do. Stephen Callis, SDA, I'll second it. Um, any comments? Uh, this is Tom Glass. I have either a friendly amendment or a, an amendment, depending on how it goes. Um, uh, the, the, uh, I want to insert, as it has to be imperiled and threatened by the ongoing rate breaches, okay. We therefore call for the enforcement of Article 2 of the Texas Constitution, and I'm waiting to get the exact name of that. I think it's separation of powers, so let's say that until I, my internet wakes up and tells me. No, it's article, the, okay. Okay, so I, no, okay, I, I now I thought it, it's- Hey guys, uh, let's, not, let's not make this too, too over the top, okay? okay? I just wanted a little introductory statement to make the English flow a little better, okay? Yeah, okay, Art, right yeah, I'll just here. say Article 2 without saying what it is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, for the enforcement- Mr. So Glass. that's my, my, my motion. Uh, do you believe that that was intended to not make the remedy exclusive for enforcement of Article 2, but uh, to include that also? Yes. Okay. Yes. I'll Although, I, as I look down this list, every one of them has to do with enforcing separation of powers, which is Article 2 of the Texas yeah, I, I accept that, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. Um, any other discussion? All in favor of uh, this amendment say aye. Aye. All opposed say nay. Nay. Okay, thank you. Of information. Mr. Jason Vaughn. Vaughn. Uh, when would you, if we have a new plank in a section, would you like to be that when we start that section or at the end of that section? Can we do it when we end the section? Thank you, sir. Thank you. I have one first. <laughs> it's not mine, it's just that was submitted by the secretary or submitted to the secretary. Um, okay, the next plank, dereliction of duty. Um, I think the editors thought that it was a little awkward. Um, I wanted to put uh, the word administrative in, in the failure of a public official, the failure of a public administrative official to discharge. I'm not sure exactly if that's what you meant. No? Okay, strike that. Okay. Um, anybody think that it needs amending or are you guys okay with the language? If we approved it yesterday, but I just wanna take a closer look at it. No. Nope. Okay. We'll just keep going. Yeah, I think it's fine. So we'll we'll accept the language as as uh, approved yesterday. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, on 192, protecting constitutional rights regarding age. Um, we actually have another plank that uses uh, raises the, raise the age, which is around line 1300. Yeah. Should we get rid of one of those? So should should be issues around ra around age be in the constitutional section or should it really be down in I think it's Mr. Chairman state I can answer those are two very different things as the sheriff can tell you if he's oh he's out of the room I apologize the raise the age is specifically about uh, Priya which is the prison rape act um, and the sheriff specifically asked for that one because it's about. Uh, it, it costs us a lot of money with our current system. So uh, one is about rights, the other is about prison. Okay, I'm just looking for the other plank. I don't find it right now. Yeah. I see where you are. 
Thirteen sixty nine. Okay. All right, we'll just leave it in. So down in business, commerce, and trade. Oh, wait, before we move to the next section. Um, so to the secretary, there were three things submitted under the constitutional issues section. Uh, the first one was about uh, what uh, Mr. Eli's motion was about. So we've already dealt with that. The second one was a resolution to censure uh, Senator John Cornyn, which <laughs> We'll defer to the end of the evening when we go over the resolution, so I'm going to set that aside. Um, the third one uh, was from Jack Shoemate, who testified, and it, on his, this is his progressive assault on constitutional government section or government proposal. Um, and I'll read it, and then if you all will just, we'll just kind of take a little straw poll about on what you all want to do with it, if you want to um, take it up um, or not. So this is a proposed new plank that says, it's called Progressive Assault on Constitutional Government. It says, we, expo we oppose expansion of government by creation of administrative agencies, brackets the administrative state, close bracket, and demand that Congress immediately pass legislation that prevents enforcement of any, quote, law, close quote, code, regulation, or statute that such agencies have or will develop. As established by the Constitution, only Congress may create valid laws. So, what does the body want to do with that? Do we not have something like that? Mm -hmm. Yep. I'm sorry, what? Do we already not have something like that, out of curiosity? Um, we don't have anything like that in the constitutional section. Um, he actually proposed it. Wait. Yeah, but that's constitutional. I don't know. I don't know why they gave it to this section. I think because it's more of a broad, broad thing. Um, I don't think we have anything like that in this section. So, any enthusiasm for adopting? Not hearing any, we will set this aside. Okay. Thank you. Um, Jason, did you have a proposal? Not in this section, sir. I just wanted to. Okay. Right there you go. Oh, hey, would you put this, Karen? Would you put this to the resolution so we can get the bottom? Can we get the resolution down there? This is century. So this is, this is not something for the flat. That's proposed in the resolution. Sure. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, so moving along. Business and Commerce, um, Texas electric, electric Grid is what we have. I think that's fine. Um, a line uh, under flooding mitigation. If you all could just review that language, governments at all levels must work together to avoid the historical bent to push projects, safety, and implementation into the future. Projects must be of most urgent priority now in order to avoid further trauma, loss of life, loss of personal government and business wealth, and diminution of the tax base. Does anyone want to change any of that? Hearing none, we'll move on. Uh, do you need a few more minutes to look? Is somebody still reviewing? I apologize. I'm showing my public school education. Okay, diminution. Yep. Okay. Can we just say shrink the tax base? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay. Um, in the next section, 
We have a lot of their ends. I, that doesn't bother me. If it doesn't bother you. <laughs> um, uh, under markets and regulation, licensing, we call upon the Texas legislature to review all business professional licensing programs and associated licensing boards for the purpose of abolishing or removing restrictions with respect to as many as reasonably possible and repealing those laws, rules, and regulations. Mr. Chairman, my apologies, but can we go back to the flood one, please, sir? Oh, yeah. Uh, Titans and resources. Further up, flood. Flooding? Yep, that flooding, one? mitigation, hurricanes, and early warning. May I propose yep. an amendment? Uh, sure. I would like to propose um, G, government boards responsible for flood mitigation shall be elected and not appointed. It's a big problem. Mr. Chairman, Stephen Callis, SD8, I would second that. Amendment. Thank you, Mr. Callis. You want to speak to your uh, motion, Ms. Boucher? Well, SD4, John Boucher, I serve on the Lone Star Groundwater Conservation District Board. Um, we have a San Jacinto River Authority Board that we are constantly embroiled with trouble with. Um, this board is in charge of flood mitigation and surface water management for the state of Texas, and you know that surface water belongs to the state. As an elected board on the Lone Star, um, we find ourselves constantly at odds with the shenanigans, and uh, that's, that's the term we use, for the San Jacinto River Board. Um, 21 lobbyists in Austin, um, a, a constant flood of misinformation that costs the taxpayers millions and millions of dollars. Um, as the way the penal code is set, the, the code is set up right now, um, if they take your property, regulatory takings, and you sue them, <coughs> Um, you pay your legal fees and you pay theirs if you lose, which sounds fair. However, if you win, um, you still have to pay yours. So there's the lack of accountability there where they just drag this out forever and ever and ever without any, any sort of retribution from the voters. And I just think it's time we end that practice. Any other discussion? <coughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say nay. Ayes have it. That's uh, amendment is adopted. It should be boards editorial. I'll accept it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We're down in markets and regulations, um, licensing. Okay. Ms. Williamson. We call upon the Texas legislature to review all Texas Department of Licenses and regulations, parentheses, PDLR, parentheses, business slash professional licensing programs and associated licensing for the purpose of abolishing or removing as many as I missed something in there. Could you repeat from where I stopped the yellow? From where I stopped the yellow, could you repeat that? I missed it. From where the yellow is, could you kind of repeat everything? Susan, hold on. Susan, hold on. Yeah, please. Okay. Did I get it all now, or is there still something? There's a D yeah. after T. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What's after that, Susan? Hold on, hold on. 
can you can you fill it out on a motion form so she can just type it in? Okay, and while you're doing that, we're going to move on, and then we'll come back to it when you've got your, your thing all written out. Okay, so just leave that in there, and we'll just scroll down. Um, if you guys will scroll down to where the transportation section starts, it's on line 473 in the document I'm looking at. Um, we've got freedom of travel, and then you've got vehicle inspection, and then vehicle registration. Um, it's kind of a double negative. I mean, it's no non-commercial vehicle, should we just say. Um, Which, which, uh, which are we talking? Sorry? I'm on vehicle inspection. Mr. Chairman, Tony Robertson, SD3. Yes, sir. Uh, I agree. Um, I think the intent of this was for just to say.